mean. When math teachers talk about mean, they really mean what normal people call the, starts with an A, average. So mean is really just the average. And if you want to find the average of numbers, in the top of your fraction, you add them all together, right? So technically it's the sum. I'm going to do sum of the numbers. Can I do the hashtag thing like that for numbers that work for you? Yep. So sum of the numbers, or if you're looking at that, you're like, I have no idea what that means. You could say add them. If sum makes sense. Feel free to skip that. Then you divide by the number of numbers. So for this next bit, if we wanted to find the average there, we wanted to find the mean, we could take all those numbers and add them together. So if we do 12 plus 11, 12 plus 11, plus 12, plus 13, plus 13. You guys all still tracking with me? And we would divide by a number that's close to my favorite one-digit number. We divide by? Five. Five, because that's how many there are. Now, the common mistake, so if without even doing this in a calculator, the answer should be somewhere close to what number? Anyone just by looking at them? Well, kind of in the middle of all those, so 12-ish maybe, because 12, there's some below, some above, so 12 point something about. If you get an answer that's way bigger than that, a common answer is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, maybe like 40-something. 40 40-something 40 totally can't be the average, right? And the mistake, I'm guessing the answer is? 12.2. 12.2. Did you round correctly? Yes. Okay, works for me. Um, the mistake that people make on these is if they just type in their calculator 12 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 plus 13 divided by 5, what the calculator does is it does 13 divided by 5 first because it follows order of operations. Remember those from last year? It'll divide, and then it'll add all the other numbers to it, which will give you a 40-something probably. So you have one of two options to make it work. The one that most people don't do is to put the numerator in parentheses. That'll force it to do all the adding first. Agreed? The other option is what most people do when they type it in is they just do all the addition in the top, hit equals, and then they divide by 5. Does that work for you guys? Cool. Can I do the next one? Trying to prove a point with the next one. Next one is really the same problem, but I added something on the end. So if I have 12 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 plus 13, now plus 65. So if I add one more number in there, I need to include the plus 65 in the numerator. And then I have to divide by 6. And if my notes are right here, if you do the whole top part and hit equals, you get 126. Divide by 6, you get... 21. We okay for average, for mean? Awesome. And there's a reason for doing those two examples, and we will come back to that. So, All right, ready for median? Median. Where do you see median other than math class? Spring break. Median is? Oh, well, maybe that too, but I'm thinking middle of the highway. Like the median is that grassy section between the people going north, people going south, yes? So for me, that's kind of how I keep remembering that. Okay, median's the middle. It's the middle of the highway, but your spring break spring break maybe feels like the middle of the year because the last couple months just go so slow. Okay, um, so median is going to be the middle number. So let me scribble that down here. So the middle number. The trick that math teachers throw at you is they give you numbers like this here, same numbers as that first example, but they're not in order. And actually, I guess it doesn't matter for, well, okay. So the key is you need to put the numbers in order first. Can't say that'll make a difference every time, but usually it will. And then median, bummer. This is where I was supposed to write my middle number. So median is the middle number. And if two numbers tie for the middle, the median is the? Oh, you can just say it out loud. That's fine. So go for it. Um, it's them added together. And it, then divided by? Two. Perfect. So we find the average of those two. So if two tie for the middle, median equals the? As a math teacher, I feel like I should write mean. But really, normal people just say average. of those two.
I'm going to skip down to the example and skip that next line, the better than mean. And if we take this next example, I need to put them in order. So I have 11, 12, 12, 13, 13. If you have a big group of numbers, I would at least count how many you have here and then count how many you have there. What I like to do, sometimes with my book and then I just erase it, is as I write down the numbers down, I'll cross them out kind of as I go just to make sure I get them all. I've, I've seen people on quizzes, they do everything right, but they miss one number and then they get the wrong answer, um, which only probably costs you half a point then. But, so when we go through there, we have first one, last one, second, second from the last. Median's going to be 12. Fair enough? But for my next example, if I write them in order, I have my 11, I have two 12s, I have two 13s, and I have my 65. So now as I go through, and you could cross them out as you go, sometimes people will like connect them like this, but my median is going to be right smack dab in the middle of 12 and 13. So some of you in your head already know the answer is 12.5. 12.5. If your brain doesn't do that, no problem. Sometimes it's harder than that. They're not right next to each other. Add them together, divide by 2, and you get 12.5. Work for you guys? So let's say this is like people in the classroom. So we're doing a study group. I get in my mom. She's maybe 65. I don't know. Don't tell her if I'm wrong. Um, but So we get a study group. There's like five of you guys and my mom. She's 65. She's coming to help. Um, if we were to try to say, okay, the, really what mean, median, and mode are, especially if you get like huge groups of data, let's say we take all of the seventh graders in the state of Michigan and we want to figure out what is their foot size so we can sell that information to Nike so they can make more money or something. Uh, we want one number that kind of represents all of the seventh graders, a typical number, fair enough? So we could go and figure out, okay, what's everybody's shoe size and average them together, get the mean. You could figure out everybody's shoe size and take the median. Sometimes one is going to be better than the other. Well, you'll notice if we have this group of numbers, most numbers are close to like 11, 12, 13. Agreed? And for the median, the median, ooh, that was interesting. The median doesn't change much. So median's 12, median's 12.5, even if you throw this outlier in there. So one number that's way different than the rest. But if we go up to the mean or the average, it really changed the average, right? Would it make sense to say the, a number that represents about how old people are in seventh grade math is 21? No, no. If you have one number that's way different, it totally changes the mean. And that was kind of my point down here. So median is better than mean if there are outliers. And those are numbers far from the other numbers. So a couple outliers typically doesn't change the median, doesn't change the middle number that much, but it can have a drastic impact on the average or the mean. Fair enough? Mode. Mode is the most, starts with a C, common. common. Perfect. So mode is the most common number. It's the most common. Or which number appears the most times? And then if you flip the page, we got a couple examples. So for this first one, this first one we can do, I'm going to jump way down here, which is perhaps bad teaching. But the mode there is going to be the number two. two. So if I look, I only have one one, I only have one eight, I only have one seven, one five, but I have two twos, agreed? So two occurs most often, so the mode would be two. Good? In this next one, though, I have three ones, and I have three fours, and I only have one six. So that's this top kind of bullet point here. If more than one number ties for the most common, what do you think? Should the mode be one? Should the mode be four? Should it be both? Carson? Yeah. Both, yep. Uh, so if more than one number ties for the most common, they both are the modes. So they both, maybe I should I say both or all? Maybe I'll say all. They, Maybe I'll say both are the number, are the mode. All makes it sound too much like the whole thing is the mode, even the ones that don't tie. Oh. 
But if they all occur the same number of times, so if I have this group one, two, three, four, it doesn't really make sense to say they're all the mode, right? If, no mode. So then there's no mode. So no mode. And so in our example there then, one, four, one, four, one, four, six, the mode is one and four. Look familiar from last year? Range is just going to be the perfect. It's the highest number. Highest number minus the lowest number. Or the biggest number minus the smallest number. Or the maximum minus the minimum or something like that. And, uh, so if you have a group of numbers like this, conveniently put in order, we would do what minus what? Go for it, Carson. 12 minus 2. Nice, okay, 12 minus 2. And get 10. So our range would be 10. That's all I have for you. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool.